I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Robert Henry Lawrence Jr.'s promising career as the first African American astronaut was tragically cut short during a high stakes space mission training in 1967. At just 32 years old, Lawrence was involved in a critical test flight aimed at mastering the steep descent glide technique, a maneuver crucial for spacecraft re entry from orbit. Piloting an F 104 Starfighter at Edwards Air Force Base, the mission took a disastrous turn when the aircraft, commanded by flight test trainee Major Harvey Royer, failed its landing approach. The plane crashed violently, catching fire and resulting in Lawrence's immediate death as his ejector seat malfunctioned, launching sideways. This mishap not only claimed his life, but also ended what could have been a groundbreaking chapter in space exploration, potentially positioning him to be among the elite group of astronauts in NASA's space shuttle program following the cancellation of the manned orbital laboratory initiative. Lawrence's legacy, however, continues to inspire, remembered for his contributions to aerospace technology, and commemorated in memorials and tributes that underscore his pioneering role in space history. This next mission was a very close call. It was actually completed, but it was very, very close to ending in disaster. The Apollo Soyuz test project in 1975 was a pretty historic space mission where American and Soviet spacecraft docked together in orbit. It marked an end in the space race and this easing in the Cold War tensions as the two countries were finally working together. Beautiful. And it all went pretty well, but the mission had a frightening end. On July 24th, 1975, as the American Apollo crew prepared for re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, they encountered a bit of a problem. During re-entry, a switch controlling the environmental control system was accidentally left in the wrong position, and this caused a nitrogen tetroxide gas leak, a toxic substance used as rocket propellant. As the gas filled the cabin, the astronauts Tom Stafford, Deke Slayton, and Vance Brand began to experience symptoms of poisoning, burning eyes, sore throats, and difficulty breathing. Brand lost consciousness, but Stafford managed to grab oxygen masks, placing one on Brand before giving one to Slayton and putting on his own. They managed to land safely in the Pacific Ocean. They were hospitalized for two weeks in Honolulu, Hawaii. In the high stakes world of space exploration, not every mission writes a story of triumph. On October 31st, 2014, the quest to conquer the final frontier faced a sobering setback when the VSS Enterprise, a space plane by Virgin Galactic, tragically disintegrated mid air during a test flight in the Mojave Desert. This was not just another routine test, the space plane was testing a new, more powerful rocket engine, marking its first powered flight in nine. Nine months. Tragically, the co pilot Michael Alsbury lost his life, and pilot Peter Seibold sustained serious injuries. The breakdown occurred seconds after the space plane was released from its carrier aircraft. The National Transportation Safety Board later pinpointed the cause a premature unlocking of the spacecraft's feathering system, an air brake designed for re entry by Alsbury. This catastrophic human error was exacerbated by several systematic failures, including inadequate safety measures, deficient pilot training, and insufficient oversight from the FAA. Despite the immediate speculations blaming the new rocket engine, investigations confirmed that it functioned correctly, leaving the focus squarely on human factors and procedural safeguards. The Apollo 12 mission, NASA's second manned mission to the moon, had a pretty scary start. On November 14th, 1969, just 36 seconds after liftoff, the spacecraft was struck by lightning. Then, about 16 seconds after that, it was struck again. These lightning strikes caused all three of the spacecraft's fuel cells to shut down, leading to a total loss of electrical power and the failure of the onboard guidance platform. In the command module, the crew, Pete Conrad, Richard Gordon and Alan Bean saw this sudden barrage of warning lights and alarms. The lightning strikes were caused by the rocket itself. As the Saturn V rocket climbed through the atmosphere, it basically acted as a 
giant lightning rod. Power needed to be restored and fast. Flight controller John Aaron remembered a solution from a previous simulation that might have restored power, and the command was unfamiliar to the astronauts at first, but they followed his instructions and it worked, bringing the command module systems back online. So this stabilized the spacecraft's power and allowed the mission to continue. And with power restored, the astronauts reset the guidance platform and continued their journey. But there was this lingering concern. Mission Control was worried the lightning strikes may have damaged the explosive bolts that opened the command module's parachute compartment, and they decided not to tell the astronauts this because there was really nothing they could do. Either the parachutes would fail and the crew would die on re-entry, or they'd be fine. Well, Apollo 12 did manage to successfully complete its mission and returned safely, splashing down in the Pacific Ocean. Let's set the scene. March 1965, the Voskhod 2 mission is orbiting Earth with cosmonauts Pavel Belyayev and Alexei Leonov on board. This Soviet space saga was about to take a wild turn as Leonov stepped into the cosmic limelight, becoming the first human to walk in space. That's right, he floated right out of the spacecraft in a specially designed spacesuit, aiming for a brief yet breathtaking 12 minute jaunt among the stars. Now, while that might sound like a space enthusiast's dream come true, it definitely wasn't all smooth sailing or space walking. Leonov's suit ballooned up like a parade float, making it tough to get back into the airlock. Imagine trying to squeeze like a puffed up marshmallow through a straw. That was basically what Leonov was doing, struggling to bend his joints to fit back inside of the craft. He had to bleed off some of the suit pressure, which is just as risky as it sounds, just to maneuver his way back in. Back inside, unfortunately, the troubles didn't stop. The hatch was a nightmare to seal thanks to some thermal warping, and the re-entry was a doozy because their landing system glitched, forcing them to switch to manual controls. And the cherry on top? They landed hundreds of kilometers off target in a forest teeming with wildlife where they spent a chilly night waiting for rescue. It was an absolutely wild ride from start to finish with moments of danger that really tested the cosmonauts' metal and survival skills. In July of 2013, an Italian astronaut named Luca Parmitano had a pretty horrifying experience on the International Space Station that caused a job to be cut short. He had water leaking into his spacesuit during a spacewalk. A malfunctioning spacesuit. I mean, that has to be up there as one of the worst nightmares for any astronaut. I mean, god damn. As he was working, water began to leak into his helmet, and because, you know, in space, water behaves differently than on Earth, it was floating all around him, making it difficult for him to hear, see, or talk to the other astronauts. Bit of an issue. And this wasn't water you'd be able to drink, either. It was leaking from the liquid cooling system in his suit, so not safe to consume. And besides, I mean, trying to swallow floating water blobs in zero gravity, that, that, that'd be a challenge. So the spacewalk was cut short for safety reasons, lasting just over an hour, making it one of the shortest in the ISS's history. Thankfully, Parmitano made it back inside the ISS safely, albeit pretty shaken up, I'd have to imagine. This story is a little unlike the others we are talking about today because this scenario unfolded during a survival training mission rather than something related to actually going to space. In a tragic twist of fate, a Russian cosmonaut, Sergei Vazovikov, met his untimely end during what was supposed to be just a routine survival training session. According to the RIA news agency, he was embarking on a solo adventure, attempting to snag his dinner from the sea, a test to hone his self-sufficiency in the wild. Unfortunately, the sea had other plans. While fishing, Sergei slipped and plunged into the icy waters. To make matters worse, a hidden menace lurked below, a poacher's abandoned fishing net. The current, unforgiving and swift, ensnared him in this underwater trap, unfortunately unfortunately sealing his fate. The NASA Columbia disaster happened on February 1st, 2003. The space shuttle broke apart as it re-entered Earth's atmosphere, resulting in the loss of all seven astronauts on board. Now, during launch on January 16th, a piece of foam insulation from the external fuel tank had broken off, 
and struck the left wing of the shuttle. Now at first, no one realized how serious the damage really was. They didn't think it was a big deal because similar foam incidents had happened before without causing any major problems. So NASA did some investigations, they considered sending a rescue mission, but ultimately they believed the shuttle would be able to make it back safely. But that wasn't the case. The foam had damaged the thermal protection system on the wing, which shields the shuttle from the intense heat of re-entry. So as Columbia re-entered Earth's atmosphere, hot gases entered the wing, causing it to just snap off and the entire shuttle disintegrated. The debris scattered over Texas and Louisiana. Apollo 1 was set to make space history as the inaugural crewed mission of NASA's ambitious project aimed at moonwalking. However, the mission tragically ended before it even began. On January 27th, 1967, during a pre-launch test at Cape Kennedy, a devastating cabin fire claimed the lives lives of all three astronauts on board, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee. What was supposed to be a routine rehearsal spiraled into disaster, exposing fatal flaws in the spacecraft's design, notably its highly flammable environment exacerbated by a pure oxygen atmosphere. The investigation that followed pointed to an electrical fault as the likely spark that set off the fire, which was fueled by the cabin's nylon materials and constrained by a hatch that couldn't be opened quickly enough. The aftermath was a mix of soul searching and sweeping reforms at NASA, which grounded crewed flights for nearly two years, while engineers reworked the spacecraft's safety features. This tragedy not only reshaped NASA's procedures and designs, but also marked a very solemn moment of reflection on the risks astronauts take. Apollo 1, a mission that never flew, left a legacy of lessons that propelled future space exploration. All right, and of course, we have the tragic Challenger disaster of 1986. The Challenger was a NASA space shuttle, and on this particular mission, there were seven crew members. The main task was to release a communications satellite into orbit and to study Halley's Comet. The shuttle took off as planned, but just 73 seconds into the flight, disaster struck. The spacecraft suddenly broke apart in mid-air, leading to the deaths of all seven crew. The cause of the explosion was later determined to be a problem with one of the rocket boosters. On that day, the weather was unusually cold, and this had an effect on the rubber O-rings, which were supposed to seal the joints and the booster rockets. They didn't function properly because of the low temperature, and as a result, there was a leak of hot gas from one of the boosters. And this leak weakened the structural integrity of the shuttle's external fuel tank, causing it to rupture the force of the explosion tore the spacecraft apart, leading to the tragic loss of the entire crew. Hats off to uh, to astronauts for, you know, yeah. honestly just risking their lives. I mean, there's like a 50-50 chance they're not coming back. Probably maybe higher. Probably higher, oh, honestly. Man. Like, yeah. I guess we'd have to look at how many astronauts have actually been to space, and then how Compare many it. didn't quite make it, or didn't make it back. Such is the way of space exploration. It's crazy out there. Well, I've been your host, James. I've been your other host, Olivia, and we'll see you next time. Bye.